Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to episode 25 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, all about Amiga Vision. Now, Amiga Vision was was released by Commodore in the early 90s. I got my copy with my Amiga 3000, but they also bundled it with a lot of the other higher end Amigas, not necessarily your Amiga 500s, but with your Amiga maybe 2500s, 3000s, and 4000s. There's a couple of versions of it. The version 1.x is for ECS machines only. Version 2.x, which is what I have, I think it's 2.05, will actually work okay on AGA Amigas and actually work with AGA images, just not particularly well. They got a lot of the coding done for it, but it wasn't perfect. Now, this presentation that I created is all about my Commodore equipment. I wanted to put something together to not only train you on how to use Amiga Vision and, and how to program in Amiga Vision, which is super, super easy, but also to go over a little bit about my, my Commodore equipment that I use on a regular basis. About 80% of the work was done on an Amiga 500. I scanned all of the images in on my DC TV, so full 24-bit images, saved them as 24-bit images, and then used AdPro to convert them to ham images, which look absolutely great. Now, most of the processing, even in AdPro, was done on this machine with my ACA 500 Plus in there. Plenty of horsepower for that. The audio work was all done on my Amiga 4000. I have a nice uh, AD516 audio card in there. So I want to go over a little bit on how to use Amiga Vision. So step right this way and take a look. So I've already created all of our images in ham mode. So let's get started with Amiga Vision. I'm going to launch Amiga Vision. Now again, this is version 2.04 of Amiga Vision. Okay, this will handle AGA images, just not very well. It doesn't do a particularly great job. So I'm also going to load my completed copy so I have something to work with here. This is the one that I've already completed. We're going to rebuild it over here so you can see how it's all done. Now, Amiga Vision starts out with this module here. Modules are kind of like different areas of Amiga Vision, different programming areas that you can go to, kind of like a subroutine, you could call it. So we're going to call this one 10 Mark Presentation. This is completely optional there. All right. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to make the presentation run a little bit faster by preloading some of the resources, bringing in some of the music files, bringing in some of the audio files and pictures. Where I do that at, down here at the bottom, where I have control, interrupt, data, weight, audio, video, and system. Let's go over to system. Let's pull resources. See how I can just drag and drop Boom, now that's part of the program. Double click it, icon name, let's call this load resources. Put a memo in there if you want to. Now I'm going to open up some of the files that I've pre-created to make them load faster in the presentation. I'm going to go into my music folder and pull in the song. Okay, so in my music folder I've created, I've pulled in part of the song. We're going to insert that. Now I'm going to go into my music folder there, put in my digitized speech, pull that in, insert, it preloads it. And lastly, let's put our main page picture in here, which in this case is going to be under images, 16 color, and for the main uh, background image, I did use a 16 color version of my logo. Now, what's going to happen is when we start this presentation, it's going to preload all those resources into RAM to make them work faster. It doesn't have to pull them off the disk. You can click total size and it'll tell you I'm pulling in 1.2 megabytes worth of 
uh, data right there. Now, the next step is I want a little bit of intro music. Now, in my 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, I have um, Helgi Valheim's uh, Mushroom, the, uh, the first 16 seconds of Mushroom as my intro music. Now, we go to Audio Video, pull that in, double click it, and we're going to call this Intro Tune. We're going to pull it up. I put that under my 8SVX folder, and I called it Mushroom 8SVX. Okay, it pulls the clip in. Now, you can have it stream it to play it back uh, as, or to pull it in from the drive as it's playing. This is for systems with lower amounts of RAM where it wouldn't be able to pull everything into RAM at once. You can also loop it to play multiple times. You could have the, the little 16 second clip play multiple times, change the volume. Pause means it's going to pause the presentation while it is playing the tune. And we don't necessarily want to do that. I'm not going to pause it. You can hit preview. You can hear it playing just fine. So now I have a little intro tune that plays at the beginning of the presentation. Next, I want an introductory page. I want a screen to come up to show what we're doing here. So I, again, I'm an AV screen to pull up an image. Double click screen. And we're gonna call this intro page. By default, it's going to read whatever image that you pull in and correctly fill these out. So for example, I'm going to look in my folders. I'm going to look under images. This is a 16 color image, so I put it in there. There's my 10 mark logo 16 color, standard IFF file. Changes it to 16 color, high resolution. I'm going to use the original palette. Here, you're telling it to present it on an interlace, interlace screen with overscan, and I do not want the pointer to show up on the screen, okay? I do not want the pointer in this case. Transitions, think of this like PowerPoint transitions or uh, in Adobe Premiere, your transitions. I wanna do a nice uh, fade from black transition here, all right? Now let's take a look at what it looks like. It's gonna fade the image in. Now, it's not where I want it to be. I want it over to the right and down a little bit. So let's go ahead, we we'll click the right mouse button to get out of there. Now we're gonna go left, say 20 pixels, and right 30 pixels. Now I'm actually moving the screen. Now let's see how that looks. Uh, let's do 10 more, 15 more pixels to the right. Yeah, that looks better, right in the middle of the screen. Now. This is a 16 color high resolution image. The Amiga does a fantastic job of interpreting my 16 million color uh, title screen. All right, now we've got our intro page. So we're playing a tune, we've got an intro page. Now I want that intro page to uh, switch over and show my 10 mark logo. That is another screen that I'm going to pull in. In this case, it's actually a brush, but I'm going to pull that brush in as a screen. If I pulled it in as a brush here, I could actually overlay it on top of my intro screen page, but then it's going to use the palette of my intro page or the palette of my brush, and it's going to mess up my 16 color image. So I'm just going to have it pull it in as another screen. We're going to pull up my brush image. This is a 16 color brush. So we'll go to images, 16, 10 mark boing brush. Now, let's see, uh, let's see, 10 mark logo. When we preview this, you'll notice it pulls up the previous screen so you can see the effect of any transitions we create. It shows up in the upper left hand corner. I want to put it in the center. Now I could do what I did with the other picture and adjust it manually here, but because this is such a, a large manipulation, I'm going to do manual locate and look what you can do. Pick it up, 
and put it wherever you want to, right in the middle. Now, transitions between the same resolution images usually work okay, but because this is using two palettes, I don't want to mix the palettes, so I'm just going to do a nice fade, and I'm going to give this a four-second fade. And the reason for that is because my intro song is still going to be playing here, and I want the song to play, the intro page to come up, the logo to come up while it's playing the song before I get into the rest of the presentation. Let's see what it looks like so far. Right Amiga period starts it out. And a nice little fade right into the 10 mark logo. All right, so it looks good so far. Now from here, I've already done my intro page, I've already done my logo. I want to put that intro page back because I am putting buttons there. All right, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. So I'm gonna pull another screen up. I'm going to call this intro background. Pull this up, 16 color image, 10 mark logo, 16 IFF. And we'll do a, a fade, just a nice quick fade transition into there. So it's gonna go from my 10 mark logo and then it should fade into my image here. Let's move that. Now, because we want to make some choices here, what we're gonna do next is have a little fun and put some buttons on the screen. We're going to go to wait which means it's gonna pull up that image and it's going to wait for input. Okay, so we click on wait. We wanna wait for a mouse click because we're gonna put some buttons on here. Drag this up to the screen. Now we're going to call this button press. If we leave it on any click, then the person can click anywhere on the screen and also move past this screen. We don't want that. We want an exclusive click because we're going to put some buttons here. How we put buttons here is through this thing called the Object Editor. We're going to click on Object Editor. Load Background. It's going to take the previous picture and use it as the background for creating our buttons. So it's going to load in the nice 16 color image. Now it gives us a choice of creating text buttons creating like a, a, a line, creating boxes, freehand shapes, circles, so we could have circle buttons on here, or use uh, animated brushes for a, for a hot spot. We're gonna do text. We're gonna click on T for text, come up here, and just create a nice little area up here. Notice it looks absolutely silly, there's nothing there. That means we have to do something with it. We're gonna click our select tool right there, and now we're going to double click that box. We're gonna give this a name, and this is just an internal name. This is called 8-bit. Now we want actual text to appear in the button, and the text I want to appear is 8-bit prawn. All right, so that's the text that's gonna appear. Now we choose a font, and I'm gonna go with a nice CG Times font. We'll do a 30 point. Okay, so we have a 30 point font. Now let's just take a look before we do anything else at what that's gonna look like. We're gonna click okay. Black background, light green, looks horrible, 8-bit prawn, okay? We wanna change this. Double click it again. Click on colors. The normal text, let's make the normal text that color. Go through our cycle gadget, background, let's make it that color. When we select it, we want to change and make these exactly the opposite. Now we've got select text as the, as the darker brown and the background as the lighter brown. So it should reverse everything if you understand what I'm saying. Let's click OK. Let's click OK. So now it's changed to the background colors there. 
Now we can test this by right-clicking Project Preview. We can see how now we click it and it reverses it. Pretty cool, huh? Right-click again to get back to our editing screen. Now we need to do something when we click that button. So we double-click it. The response is going to be the number eight. And you'll see why I'm using the number eight. That's just something, you know, because it's 8-bit prawn, uh, just something that I chose. But it's going to look for that response when you click the button. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to quickly create some of the other text boxes. OK, so I changed the colors of some of the, uh, the, the, the icons here, or some of the buttons. I thought they'd stood out a little bit better. Let's take a little closer look at them. Again, we're going to Amiga Pron here. The response is A. And Video Tour, the response is V. And End, the response is E. Okay, we'll test these out. Right click, Preview. And then, yeah, I like this, this color scheme a little better when I click on them. All right, so now, things you can do on this page. This button here, this is the clone button. So if you want to clone and make a whole nother button and then edit that button, that's an easy way to make a clone of it. So I could have just cloned all these and then just changed the wording in them. We're going to click the little scissors here and then click there and that's gonna delete the clone. Uh, this button is the move button. So if we wanna move the buttons on the screen. It's no problem at all to reposition them. Let's go back to our main screen now. We don't need to save this. It's already going to be saved when you hit exit. Okay, so that's called button press. Now the next thing is we want to do something when we press a button. This is where we're going to go to use our controls. We click on control. You see it's uh, call a subroutine, go to someplace specific, enter a loop, and then our if then and if then else, okay? In this case, we're gonna use if then, and you'll see why in just a minute. Grab if then, pull it up here, double click, and we're gonna call this 8-bit path. Now, you can pull up all kinds of stuff here. If you go to functions, absolute, anim, ascii, boolean. You can get all kinds of information pulled in from interactions with AmigaVision. In this case, we're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna call it response. Response equals, double equal sign, quote, A. Basically, it's if the response is A, then do this. Okay, now, these are going to be whole new paths, and I'm using them as, as modules. We'll go to System, grab a module, plunk it down there, call this 8-bit path. I accidentally called it that on the other screen. That's all we need to do there. This tells it, okay, if the selection is, that's supposed to be an eight. If the selection is an eight, follow this path. If not, it continues going. So the eight bit path is me pulling up and talking about my eight bit computers. We're gonna to go to the menu. We're gonna to go to audio video, and I've created a little 50 second soundtrack Double click our sound button. We're gonna call this Doug's speech. Pull up a directory. Now, I do not want this to pause while it's playing because it's gonna be displaying images while, it, while I'm talking. So I'm gonna remove pause. And a little preview here. Hi, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast and all right, so that's working. Now I click OK. It's going to continue playing that speech 
while I pull up all this other information. These are going to be screens that I pull up. So first screen, I'm going to pull a screen up, double click. We're going to call this Vic logo. Vic logo. All right, we can pull up a preview of it and it should pull up the previous image and then it will transition into my, my ham image there. So I know that's working. Now, because we're going from a 16 color image, image to a ham image, I'm only going to be able to do these screen controls here. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a fade from black. Okay. Now, this is also important. I don't want the pointer to appear on the screen while it's displaying these images. So I'm going to remove the pointer, click OK. All right, now let's, yep, yeah, we got a transition there. Now, because my speech is about 50 seconds long, I need to put a little delay in between the pictures or it's just gonna zip from one picture to the next to the next, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the main menu. I'm gonna wait, pull up a delay, double click the delay, and I'm gonna give it a four second delay on the picture. I won't name that one. And I'm gonna go and pull up all the rest of these pictures. Now, because all of the rest of these pictures I'm gonna be showing are ham images, I'm able to do these bitmap transitions. Now with ham images, some of these transitions look kind of yucky, so, uh, but I find that the horizontal and uh, folds work out pretty good. Let's just do a little quick look here. It's gonna pull up the VIC-20 logo image, and then it does a little transition, a uh, little fold, and that transition just fine. Okay, so what we've got here on the left, and again, this right-hand screen is just uh, the original one that I created that I'm using as a template. What I've done is I've put all my pictures in here, my VIC-20 pictures, my C64 pictures, and I've put a three second delay in between each picture and a nice transition. And all my pictures come up just fine. Should transition right into my SX64, yep. And in the background, I've got my speech about my computers. And so that's about a 50 second demonstration there, which we'll watch in just a minute. So now we've got preliminarily our 8-bit path done. Now we want to do our Amiga path. Now we're just going to put a placeholder in here because I don't want this video to be too long. So we're just going to do this as a placeholder. Now take a look at the logic here. If the result is 8, it goes down the 8-bit path. If not, it follows the path down here and we need something else to happen down here. So we're going to go back to our control. We're going to do if, then. We're going to pop another module on there. And we're going to call this module Amiga. And we're going to do if our response is equal to a for Amiga, just like the button presses. Okay, if it, if it results in that. Now we'll just do something a little fun here, just as a little placeholder. We're gonna go back to AV, and we're gonna do speech. Call it, you chose Amiga. You chose Amiga. Now this is going to use the built-in speech synthesizer in your Amiga. You chose Amiga. Now, be aware that as of OS 3.0 and beyond, actually I think it might even been 2.1 and beyond, the translator library and the other speech synthesis libraries were not included with the Amiga operating system. So if you load Amiga Vision by default onto an OS 3.0 or above system, speech synthesis isn't going to work. Luckily, you can just grab the appropriate files. I'll put the, the links to those in the description, copy them to the proper place on your Amiga, and you're gonna have an OS 3.9 system that talks to you just fine. So that's what I did here. 
And we're also going to just put a quick, cute little animation here. These generally work with anim5 files. Now, I have an anim7 file here that was grabbed off of the, the disk, and I converted it to an anim7 file because I wanted to change the resolution. Now, it gives you an error, not a valid anim5 file. You click OK. It works anyways. Let's take a look at what it does. And we want it to loop. And we're going to have it loop five times. So this animation will loop five times. Let's take a look at what it does. And I want to put that in the center of the screen too. So just something cute to as, as a placeholder. Be You already know how I'm going to move this. I'm going to manually locate. I'm going to put the animation right smack dab in the center. Hit OK. Preview again. And it starts the animation just fine. Again, it supports anim5 files, but it will work with anim7. It'll just give you an error message. Now, the third response is going to be video. Again, I'm not going to do anything with it in this case, but I want to put the response there. We're going to call this functions response equals video. And then we're going to put another module here, and we'll just do a quick little speech synthesis. Now, video is kind of fun, but we will go over that in my next video. You chose video. Good enough. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to have it end the presentation if we click the end button. You can see where I'm going here. If response equal to E, then we're going to go to this module and we're going to call this module bye bye. back to our audio video, little speech synthesis, Buh. bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we go. Speed it up a little bit. Now, we also want to be able to choose any of the options from the button up here, from our different button presses, look at those responses and then go back and choose something else. This is where this little guy comes in. I've gotten ahead of myself because when we do bye bye, we want to end this, which is this symbol quit, that just quits. My, my mistake. Now here, this is a go to statement. So if we've done all of these responses and if it's gone through its modules and then gone back, then it's going to loop back, which is actually kind of cool. We're going to do control. We're going to do go to just like a basic programming language. This box means it's not going any place. You have to double click this box and tell it where to go. Placeholder icon selected. Choose type of reference to be made or cancel. And of course, we want to choose a reference. And it's an explicit reference. Now, my cursor turns into a question mark. I can say, okay, when you're done, go back to the intro page. It's just creating a loop. Reference this icon, OK, select for reference, continue, select another icon. We're going to do OK. All right. Now, believe it or not, we've just finished a sweet little 
short presentation. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Amiga period to start it out. Okay, so now it comes up after the brief inter introduction to 8-bit Pron, Amiga Pron, Video Tour, or End. If we choose Amiga Pron, you chose Amiga. Tells us what we did, and it'll start the little animation. Now it hits that go to loop. It goes back. You chose video. Okay, we chose video. We didn't tell it to do anything with video, so it's going to loop back and bring our option screen. Now watch, here's the actual presentation itself for 8-Bit Prime that we finished. Hi, this is Doug from 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast, and you have clicked the option to look at my 8-Bit collection. I started back in about 1982 with a Commodore VIC-20 that we picked up for $89 at a department store. Learned to program on it, uh, saved everything to tape drive, as we often did back then. Then in a couple of years, I picked up a Commodore 64, which I used until 1987 when I got my first Amiga. Absolutely loved the Commodore 8-bit line, created tons of games, created tons of basic programs, and just had a blast with them. It wasn't until 2018 that I actually started collecting again and picked up new VIC-20s, new Commodore 64s, and the rest of my collection that you see here. And lastly, we can click end. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And it goes right back. So as you can see, creating a quick presentation is super easy, super fast. And Amiga Vision is very much like an actual programming language. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun to create. And you can see you create these things very, very quickly. The whole presentation can go together in 10 or 15 minutes for what I did. Of course, there's a lot more involved with digitizing the images to begin with, converting them to the right format, getting the audio to the right format. But, but none of that is difficult for the Amiga. The Amiga can handle that just fine with the right hardware. Now, on the next episode, I want to dig deeper into Amiga Vision. I want to complete the Amiga section, which is going to not only involve some photos of my Amigas, but also I want to do some videos with my VLAB Motion and put together some, some videos that we can watch on here and put in the presentation uh, and maybe do a little bit more with the, the audio, maybe some, some music or something like that with the Amiga. Now, under the video tour button that we created, that's actually going to play back a HAM6 video, full HAM6 video, just like I've done on some of my other uh, recordings that you can download from my website. And there's a really cool way it can handle accessing external programs and external files, because obviously Amiga Vision has no idea what those HAM6 videos are. That came along in 2011 or 2012. Uh, but it can play them back just fine, which is really cool. So next week, we'll dig deeper into Amiga Vision, access some more of its features. But until then, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, signing out.